In this video, we'll talk about varicella zoster virus, also commonly known as chicken pox virus. So stay tuned till the end and we would cover all the basics and important information regarding this. So varicella zoster virus can cause two distinct disease, varicella chicken pox and herpes zoster, which is also known as shingles. So this particular virus is a double-stranded DNA virus, which is neurotropic in nature. It's actually a herpes virus. So it can affect the dorsal root ganglion. So it can affect the peripheral nervous system. The sensory fibers are affected by these virus. In a moment, we would know. Generally, the primary infection happens through the nasopharynx. So upper respiratory tract is getting infected and it is a droplet infection or it can also spread via touching the infected person. So there are itchy, painful, reddish rash rashes all over the body. So let's look at the primary infection. It happens via respiratory droplet, coughing, sneezing. These are the prime ways by which it can be transferred. It infects the respiratory epithelial cells. Eventually it moves to the lungs and affect the alveolar cells in the lungs. Eventually, in subsequent days, these virus lead to painful itchy rashes all over the body. Now, these are specific hallmarks of chickenpox. Question is, why does these rash develop? And how does these varicella zoster virus reach the skin? They were in the lungs. So it turns out that while infecting the oropharynx and the nasopharynx, there are uh, tonsil tissues, which are lymphoid tissues, where these viruses can actually infect the T cells. Now T cells can circulate into the bloodstream. And while they're circulating in the bloodstream, they can eventually reach the skin and thereby infecting the skin cells. And thereby they form these kind of rashes. Now these rashes are pretty characteristic. Initially, they appear in the chest and the face, sometimes in the back as well. They are like itchy, blister kind of rash. Now they have specific morphology and specific nomenclature. Eventually, these rashes spread all over the body. Initially, the rash could be a macule. That means small, flat, red spot. Then it can become a papule. That means a small red bump. Eventually, it might become a vesicle, which is fluid-filled, blister-like rash. Then there is pustule, which is just like a vesicle, but it has more pus filled within it. And eventually it can form scabs. That means when the blisters dry out and leave a scar at the back. So it's kind of like a crust of that blister. So these are hallmarks, uh, hallmarks of these rashes found in chicken pox. And one can have all these stages simultaneously. Okay, so question is how the varicella zoster virus affect the skin. So already I talked about there are blood vessels which are underneath the skin, underneath the dermis. So basically these blood vessels has circulating T cells which are carrying the zoster virus. So these T cells use them like a cab. They arrive their destination using these Uber, which are the T, T cells. Now they release these viruses and it affects the epidermal and the dermal cells. Now infected T cells exit through the bloodstream, infect the epidermis and forms macules and papules. So papules and macules are the outcome of this infection. In 24 hours, vesicles form. And in many of the cases, Zang cells are found, which are altered keratinocytes, which having, having multi-nucleus. Then, um, eventually these particular macules or papules resolved forming that scab but still it can shed some amount of virus question is why these rashes are discontinuous why they are not all over the skin the simple reason is there are specific cells in the skin which are also secreting interferons that interfere with the viral assembly and thereby it ensures only few cells are affected but nearby cells are spared. This is how our body fights back to prevent the infection. There are also CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells which recognize viral peptides using its class uh, I mean, pro when presented on class 1 MHC molecule and that signaling leads to production of cytotoxic granules and secretion of these cytotoxic granules.
and that lead to apoptosis of the cells which are infected by this virus and thereby this infection actually resolves by its own it just requires time now since vz uh, v affects all the epithelial cells in the skin and we know that skin is innervated by several sensory fibers these viruses can retrogradely travel from the nerve ending to the cell body and these cell bodies are ending up into the spinal cord into the dorsal root ganglion and eventually they can remain there in a latent state whenever required they can be reactivated and they can move anterogradely and infect the skin again so that is why one thing to important one thing to note that the dorsal root ganglion is kind of like a storage place for these virus for long term so what we learned there is primary infection and the rashes appears these are very common in children generally there are not big complications but sometime there could be bacterial sepsis pneumonia etc associated with these uh, infection but eventually there is a latent phase that is happening in the dorsal root ganglion and viruses move in a retrograde fashion move the cell move to the cell body into the dorsal root ganglion and stay there for a long time it's latency and when eventually when the body's immune system become weak and weaker as we grow old at around age 50 there could be a reactivation that might lead to uh, the shingles so shingles are more localized rash may be present asymmetrically in one side of the body it really depends which uh, DRG is basically uh, affected. There could be some complications like myelitis, uh, vasculopathy, gastrointestinal ulcer, pancreatitis, etc. So key points to remember regarding VZV infection is like chickenpox starts with an incubation period, then a prodermal phase and eventually forming itch itchy rashes. Shingles occur due to reactivation and that happens generally in the adult population beyond 50 and there are blistering rashes which are more localized and could be asymmetric in one side of the body just to recap here is a timeline of the vzv infection so the primary there are incubation period um, there are infection phase where the upper respiratory tract is infected liver and the spleen gets infected within 10 days then there is a contagious period where there are active rashes on the skin there could be fever at this point and eventually the virus goes to a latent phase moves to the dorsal root ganglion it's not eliminated and it stays there in the body eventually they can reactivate it based on the suppression by the immune system if that is removed these virus would come back to life again now looking at the clinical history symptoms these kind of uh, rashes macules papules etc one can look at uh, one can make a diagnosis it's pretty easy and it's kind of like a black and white diagnosis not difficult another way is to look at the cells which are present in the blisters the in the blister fluid so zang cells can be identified from the blister fluid pcr based testing for genes is the most accurate test also there is a direct immunofluorescent test but that is not really prescribed in case of shingles the pain itching and tingling sensation happens more localized fashion and the rash could be asymmetric and erythematous and, and might have erythematous base and that is usually restricted to a single dermatome not spreading everywhere in all the dermatome and even if after resolution of the rashes there could be pain in those dermatome areas anyway acyclovir is a good a choice of drug that can interfere with the viral infection intramuscular is more preferred oral acyclovir is not that uh, efficient two other molecules like uh, famicyclovir famc cyclovir and valacyclovir are also uh, good candidates against this particular virus so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and see you in next video please support our channel using super thanks see you in next video